Hi, my name is Andrew Lanchani, and today I'm going to walk you through some survey tips for writing surveys, collecting data, and analyzing results. And this is brought to you by InsightfulSurveys.com. The first step before you create your survey is identifying an objective. And yeah, it's pretty common sense, but a lot of people don't take the time to figure out what they want to accomplish with their survey. So you need to clearly define a list of objectives or questions that you have about your business, customer, competitor, or product. When you design your survey, make sure every question asked refers to one of the objectives you have outlined. Without thinking through the objectives before your survey is designed, you might miss the mark and prevent the survey from being as effective as it can be. And I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of surveys that are just bad, bad, bad surveys. And a lot of the, a lot of the reasons are because they didn't define objectives. They didn't think through their survey and it turns out it ends up being some disorganized basically piece of crap. The next thing is to come up with an introduction. Make your introduction interesting and that clearly states the purpose of your research. It should grab the attention of potential respondents and encourage their participation. If you want to have a high response rate for your survey you need to grab them with your introduction. It's kinda of like an ad that you want someone to click on. The introduction should also include instructions on how to complete the survey and an estimate of how much time it will take. If it's going to take an hour, let them know. If it's going to be a five-minute survey, certainly let them know that it's not going to be that long. It's not going to take much time. Write in the questions. Okay, a lot of people think, oh, writing a survey is easy. I can, I can write a survey in five minutes. Well, it may seem easy, but there's some amount of skill and attention required. You should take the time and effort to carefully think out each question as a relevant and carelessly worded questions may produce substandard results. Making decisions on bad results could, could really create serious problems for your business, for your company. And below are some things that should be kept in mind when designing your survey. You need to keep the survey short, as short as possible for sure. Um, ask only questions that directly address the study goals. I mean, you may have a list of 50 questions that are nice to know. Well, if you, if you, that can be another survey, but keep them as pertinent as possible to the survey that you have. Let your visitors know their progress. So if they're on page three, let them know they're on page three of seven. And also, you could also let them know based on percentage. You're 20% of the way through or 30% of the way through, whatever. Make the questions quick and easy to complete. Don't ask these complicated, hard questions because you know what's going to happen? They're going to bail and then your survey will not get completed. Use plain, easy to understand language. You know, we're, we're all smart here, but we don't have to talk above everyone's heads when we're doing a survey. You need to make it as easy as possible because if people aren't understanding your questions, they'll probably answer them anyway and you're going to get bad results. You know, organize your questions in logical groups. Have it organized so if someone can follow, follow the logic of their survey. Ask important questions first, the demographic questions last. Demographic questions are simply age, what's your age, gender, income, those kind of things. Sometimes the sensitive questions for sure should be at the end. You don't want to ask them right away, you know, what is your income, the very first question because they're going to, they're going to, they're going to bill in your survey. Make the survey visually appealing and branded to the site. The more interested, interesting the site, the survey looks, the, the longer you'll be able to keep them on there. Allow skip patterns. So basically, if you have, uh, you want to segment your audience based on males and females, and you have certain questions pertaining to males, certain questions pertaining to females, um, skip, st skip males through past the female questions and skip females past the male questions. Simple as that. And our tool at Insightful Survey allows you to do that. Allow rotation of question responses. So if you have a list of several choices, you don't want to have the first choice always first because um, because of survey bias. They're going to answer that first choice more often than, than the responses below that. So you want to rotate those responses so that the first response doesn't always show up first in a list. Don't combine two questions into one. Each question should stand by itself. Avoid biased or leading questions that indicate the preferred answer. At the end of your survey, provide a place for respondents to add comments and thank them for their assistance. Choose the question, appropriate question format. We'll talk more about that here in a second. Test your questions on a sample audience. That's very important. To send your survey to your friends, to your family, let them take a look at it and let them know, let you know if they're confused by anything. Oftentimes, you'll get some information back that you never really would have guessed. And here's some different question types. These are the question types, some of the question types on the Insightful Survey service. And I'm going to walk you through these real quickly. The one choice questions, the kind you choose, if you basically want to force respondents to choose only one answer from, from the listed choices. For instance, 
male, female, what is your gender? That's only going to be one choice, obviously. Multiple choice questions. That's if you're going to have, um, if you're looking for possibly multiple choices, like what is what are some of your favorite sports? Okay, someone's going to have more than one favorite sport, possibly, so you want to let, allow them to answer more than one choice. The matrix questions basically are um, allow someone to rate several different attributes or items um, on a rating scale. So basically you'll have sort of some rows and you have columns which will be basically your scale. So um, that will allow you to to get ratings on several different attributes. Also there's an open-ended one-line type question format. If you want the response to type in a short response, this is usually if you want to uh, have a short phrase such as a name or address. The open-ended essay questions are used when you seek a more thought-out longer response which will be typed in by the respondent. Insightful Surveys provides all the tools you need to add questions to your survey. And once you create an account and begin creating your survey, you can click on sample questions to find a battery of questions to help you get started as well. Okay, collecting responses. There's several different options you can use when collecting responses. One of them is linking and having a LinkedIn email. That's the most popular method that our clients use. So basically, if you have a low volume site or don't have a site at all or have questions geared toward a specific audience, such as newsletter subscribers or customer list, then the email method is, is recommended. And you want to make sure to state up front what your intention is, especially if you have never emailed them before, sell them do so. Otherwise, you could be accused of spamming. It's okay to send out one reminder email every couple days after the first invitation email is sent, but refrain from sending repeated solicitations. You know, a max of two or three times is probably what you want to do. Pop-up windows on your site is another method you could use. If you desire to gather opinions about your site or learn more about those visiting your site, then your best option is intercepting those visiting your site with pop-up surveys. You need to keep in mind the amount of traffic you have coming to your site before you decide to use your site as your primary method of data collection. And pop-up surveys are recommended because they yield high response rates. Usually, it really depends, but it can be anywhere between, I would say, you know, 2 or 3% to as high as 30 or 40%. It is usually better to intercept visitors once they leave a particular page as opposed to when they first enter a page. And you also want to activate the window only once per unique visitor. You don't want to bother your customers um, over and over again as they, as they go from page to page in your site. And I, I do like pop-up surveys because they really allow you to learn about current visitors to your site and they allow you to keep visitors in your site and they enable you to control the percent of visitors invited to complete the survey. A third method is a link on your site. You want to make the link stand out and place the link prominently on your site where people are going to see it because with links you're not going to get as high of a response rate as you would with pop-ups most likely just because they're not as intrusive. Regardless of which method you use, you want to leave the survey open for at least a week but no longer than two weeks and don't allow a respondent to take the survey more than once. And below are some things to keep in mind when analyzing your data. You want to delete any duplicates or other undesired responses from your data. So if you have someone who's taken the survey three or four times, you want to get rid of that data and possibly all the data if it's if it's somebody who's trying to abuse the system. You also want to determine if you have sufficient amount of completes. In most cases, 100 or more responses per survey is statistically large enough to draw fairly firm conclusions, but if you can get more than 100 responses pretty easily and cheaply, then go for it. Also, you want to determine if it's appropriate to look at specific subgroups such as males versus females, and you need to have obviously ample sample size to be able to do that. If you have more complex analyses of the data, you can export your data file into a spreadsheet or stats program at Insightful Surveys, and there's several programs we recommend to analyze your results. There are SPSS, SAS, Microsoft Excel, and Access. So those are all programs you can use, but normally, normally our clients simply use Excel, and they can export the data into the spreadsheet and do whatever they want to with it. That's basically the survey tips, um, and as I said, was brought to you by Insightful Surveys. And if you'd like to create your own survey, visit www.insightfulsurveys.com. It's a really easy to use interface, and we make it very easy for you to create online surveys. So uh, look forward to having you on our site, and thank you for listening to this brief video tutorial.